Our next guest has packed uh, a lot of living into 32 years. Uh, at 32, by the way, she is our youngest reader here today, beating me by a few years. Um, this is the first time that uh, she'll be reading with us. She is an actress who has appeared in uh, a number of episodes of CSI. She is also a model and has appeared on the cover of Maxim. She's also appeared in Seventeen and uh, Sassy. She's going to read a piece called Falling Stars, and it's from her book, A Model Life, a Memoir. I give you Jennifer Sky Band. Hi. <laughs> um, I wanted to give you just a little uh, snippet of what it is that my book is about. Um, it's called A Model Life. It's a young adult memoir about my transformation from dyslexic chubby outcast to teenage model and the, and the five years that I spent in the fashion business. A hideous, beautiful world that I just managed to survive. I'm gonna actually read the very first chapter that begins the book um, after the prologue, and then I'm gonna get into more of the hideous part of being a model. This is called Fairy Dust. I was conceived in a double Y trailer a bicentennial baby born in 1976 to a Yankee mommy and an old South daddy, self-taught, functioning hippies who loved each other and loved their little ball of fire and smiles named Jenny. My home was a place of water and earth along the evergreen coast of Florida, a place where birds and fish and people lived happily ever after in the water and in the air. It was a time of many hippie sayings like, hey man, do your own thing. And my parents did, and upgraded their life quickly, building a tall wooden house on stilts, away from town, private, and huggy, hugging the dewy savannas. Every evening at dusk, the alligators would sing a sunset song to each other, and my mom would feed me homemade baby food, food to help me grow beautiful and strong. My first memories were of our wooden house on the hill, secret and hidden, behind the driveway where wild cherries grew. Swinging on a hammock between palm trees in the front yard, the southern sun flickering, playing above me like fairy dust. Walking across the tops of the monkey bars, touching the clouds, kissing the sun drops. Eating watermelon on the porch with my daddy, till all the sweet pink gone down to that bitter rind. When I was three, my baby sister, Katie, came along and I loved her only once trying to smother her with one of the large couch pillows. <laughs> my mom, luckily my mom had an extra sense about her children and rushed from the kitchen to stop me before I could go too far. Soon Katie and I were best friends, touching tongues and sharing chicken pox like kids do. During the summer, our family took trips north, pilgrimages to oceanside towns, following the surf, Mom and Dad would collect us from the yard or a tree with dirt under our nails and our hair shading our cheeks, and we'd jump on our slightly, into our slightly rusted station wagon to travel north, crossing state lines towards bigger oceanic waves. At a picnic cove off the road, white and dark sand mixed on the ground like the wet and the salt in the air. We were just close enough to the beach to see the sand at our feet and taste the ocean on our tongue. I could eat a whole bag of plump Georgia peaches, one after the other, dripping syrupy stick all over my tiny teeth. Sometimes I would even wander off and join other families. Little big-eyed honey-haired me sitting down at our other family's table, watching, listening, intent on their other conversations, joining in easily in their other worlds. Because the world was so big and full, and full of diamond beautiful things moments tangy, salty, sweet, and creatures unique. This jumps ahead whenever I am 16. No. <coughs> we left the European city of fashion behind and headed out in a convoy, winding our way towards the sea. Our cars made passes like planes through the chilly fog banks rolling off the ocean. Mist and dew danced by my window, and if I blew on it, it would fog too. And then I could draw little hearts and notes of love to myself, because that was all I had at the moment. We were headed just over the border of northern Italy to shoot bathing suits for the week, and I was the model. 
In a pool chilled like the winter's eve, I spent my week. The food I constantly shoveled into my mouth, the hunger never satisfied, did nothing to protect me from the cold. All the extra thousands of extra calories warm the organs, the insides, but the outside was left to brave the weather. I couldn't help but shake. I couldn't help but cringe. My wide lips couldn't help but turn blue hues, purple and periwinkle. These were not pretty things for his pictures. The photographer, commander of this tiny world, commander of me. And now I stand, facing his anger, a large Italian man with a plate-sized face trying to hold back tears that leak out two by two. Several towels are wrapped around me, trying to warm my icy bones. They are rough from years of hotel use and aren't helping, but it doesn't matter. Physical pain isn't what hurts anymore. The photographer's mouth is big, whale-sized as he looks down, looks down at me, down at me from inches away, his accent thick, but meaning getting through loud and clear, leaping off the tongue, rambling over each and every molar, the words quickening and sharpening over the points of the canines to an ego-fueled crescendo as they're flung out of his mouth into me, into the hollow 16-year-old eyes. They travel in and sink. You think that you are the star? You are not the star. You are nothing. I am the star, he said. After he's had his fill, worn himself out, finished, I'm excused for a rest. And I have one purpose. I buy a phone card, and I find a pay phone, and I call my mom and cry hard. I was just so cold, I moan as I hang on the phone box cord and crouch on the ground, hiding under it, hugging my knees, crying and crying and crying until my phone card runs out. She soothes me, reassures me as best she can from across an ocean. When a foreign voice comes on, speaking words I don't understand, but indicating that my time is up, Mom says, I love you. I love you, my girl. And we hang up. This is not the fairy tale I had signed up for, unless it was a dark one, the kind that was used to frighten children. Because in here it feels dark, it feels damp and cold, and the air of paradise flowers and the sea salt fades. And at the edges now is a slight decay, a decay that leaves a metallic taste in the back of my mouth and makes me want to lie down here under this place, under the phone booth with the last sounds of my mother's voice and go to sleep until it is over and gone. But that is not what I do. That is not who I am. So I sniff and I wipe away the moist on the back of my hand and I stretch out my bare legs and look at them. The bumps on my knee skin, the spot where I fell off, the scooter going too fast down our, long, our hill's long twist of a driveway, the 10 toes with short nails so often coated with sand from my warm beach. I look at me, the old me, and I feel better remembering who I was where I came from, and where I was going back to, always. Yes, I think, they owe me for now, just for now.